is coffee good for you? You've probably seen various headlines that make contradictory claims, which can easily lead people to assume that scientists don't know what they're doing or are always changing their minds. But that's not true. Instead, there are three very good reasons why you may see these ever-changing headlines. First, they're not all studying the same thing. One might survey people about how much coffee they drink, Another might assign participants to drink a very specific amount of coffee each day at a set time. One might use regular coffee while another uses decaffeinated. One might take into account the experience of drinking coffee, such as chugging a quick cup versus sitting and enjoying a leisurely latte. They might each measure different outcomes, such as stress or weight or heart attacks. Or maybe one study includes a diverse group of participants, while another only focuses on older obese men. Second, they want to be precise. There's always going to be the possibility of error in research, no matter how good your study is. So researchers will say things like, the evidence overwhelmingly suggests that, or the hypothesis was supported, but they won't say that the hypothesis was proven because nobody can be absolutely 100% sure that this is the case. To the general public though, this can sound like they lack confidence in their work. And finally, news reports make sweeping generalizations. It may be that the person writing the news piece doesn't know how to properly read scientific research, or it may be that they're being dramatic to get more readers. Either way, the researcher's more nuanced reporting will often be boiled down in headlines to either coffee is good for your health or coffee is bad for your health. I couldn't find a good example here that specifically dealt with health benefits, but one example involving coffee was this study that found that there was a small but statistically significant correlation between people preferring bitter foods and their scores on measures of psychopathy and everyday sadism. I should also clarify here that psychopathy and everyday sadism, as used here, don't mean serial killer, which is what many people assume, but rather a person's tendency to take advantage of other people, to be insensitive to their feelings, etc. But that doesn't make a very exciting headline, does it? So instead, we get headlines like these. The one from Reader's Digest actually makes two mistakes. One, it assumes that most psychopaths like black coffee, which isn't what the original author said. But even if that was true, all psychopaths like black coffee wouldn't in any way tell us that all people who like black coffee are psychopaths. Think of it this way. All murderers have consumed water at some point in their lives but that very definitely does not mean that all people who consume water will go on to commit murder. So what's the takeaway here? The key is that when you have multiple studies that seem at first to show contradictory findings, that's not a bad thing. In fact, that's the scientific process at work. If you think of each individual study as a puzzle piece, then you realize we need to have all the puzzle pieces in order to see the complete picture. When two studies seem at first to show contradictory findings, it may be because of random error, but it's also quite likely due to differences in what data they collected or how, and those differences by themselves can be very important. One way to account for this is to do a meta-analysis where researchers combine the results of those multiple smaller studies to draw conclusions based on that collection of data. So there you have it. Now you know that when scientists sometimes sound wishy-washy, it's because they are being careful and precise and approaching different questions in different ways, and that's science in action.